So this is my first Rants, Raves, and Reviews episode, and I really wanted to talk about uh, actually my favorite book of all time. It's really, really old. It is called Conversations on the Plurality of Worlds, and it is by Bernard Le Bouvier du Fontenelle. Um, I don't speak French. So this book is actually, I have two versions of this book. So it was originally printed in French and then it was translated into English. This is the Afro-Ben translation, which is called A Discovery of New Worlds. And so it's a little bit more old school because it was published in the 1600s, but it's, it's honestly, it's such a great book. And here's why. So we all remember Galileo, right? He wrote, um, this gigantic book and you can see it's, it's much, much bigger. Seriously guys, the font is like type 8 in here. And his book was not well received by Pope Urban X. Very likely because he put all of the Pope's arguments into the stupid character, whose name is Simplicio, which means simpleton in English, which means moron in modern English. Yeah, Galileo wasn't the most subtle person ever. So we all know what happened to Galileo, right? He was found grievously suspect of heresy, he was put under house arrest when he was about 69, and he lived the next eight years of his life under house arrest until he died in 1642. So the take-home message for Galileo's book is that the Earth is not special, right? If you don't get anything else out of this book, that's it. Earth is not the center of the universe, and it's pretty much not special. This is something that astronomers like to call the Copernican Principle. And the Copernican Principle is basically just uh, the principle of mediocrity. Kind of ironically, the Copernican Principle kind of gave rise to what Arthur Eddington called uh, middle-class pride, where we take pride in the fact that we are so mediocre, that we're not, we're basically not on any extremes. You know, Earth is certainly not the smallest planet, but it's not a gas giant, and the Sun is a fairly normal star. It's not a pulsar, it's not a giant, it's, but it's not a small star either. So we have this idea that, kind of the Goldilocks idea, where it's not too hot, it's not too cold, but it's just right. We can take middle-class pride in the fact that we are so normal. So I stumbled upon Fontenelle's book a few years ago and it basically takes the Copernican principle and just pumps it full of steroids. So in Galileo's book, the dialogues concerning the two chief world systems, what you have is this Copernican principle of the earth is moving, the sun is at the center of the solar system, and we are not the center of the universe. What we get in Fontenelle's book is <laughs> It's not just that. What we get is there are aliens everywhere, and there are people everywhere, and the Earth is not only not special, we are not alone, you know, and it, he goes off on basically all of the things that would be similar in the rest of the universe, but also the things that probably would be the same. So he kind of, he does assume there's a lot of life out there, that the universe is just teeming with life, and he also assumes, and this is, this is a really big jump, um, for the time that every single star is a solar system and he calls them vortexes or vortices which is what Descartes called them and he said you know I, I imagine that every star is a solar system and that there are planets going around these stars and those planets have people and those people are like us and this was written in 1686 so that's one of the things that really changed my view of history is I, I kind of had this idea that you know, we really didn't think about these things until the early 1900s, maybe the late 1800s, uh, where are there people on Mars, are there people on Venus, where we really started to think about the solar system. But in the 1600s, we have this French philosopher going off about, you know, how there's probably people on planets going around every single star in the night sky, and it's just, it's wonderful. Fontenelle lived almost a hundred years. He was born in 1657, he died in 1757, and he was a character. There's a story of Fontenelle meeting Madame Helvetius, who was a well-known solonier in France, and she was in her 30s and he was in his 90s, and she's this beautiful, beautiful woman, widely regarded to be uh, just fabulously gorgeous woman, unfortunately. There's not a whole lot of paintings of her when she's like under 50, so I can't verify that. And he says to her, Ah, oh, madam, if only I were 80 again. To which Madame Helvetius presumably responded, Dude, you're like 100. Now, I'm not saying that to be mean. You're seriously, though, you're like 99. But thanks for the compliment. So if we actually look at Fontenelle's book, it's called The Conversations on the Plurality of Worlds. And if that sounds 
a lot like dialogue concerning the two chief world systems, it is supposed to. Galileo makes his characters discuss the world system and cosmology for four days. Fontenelle makes his characters discuss cosmology for five evenings, and they're set up the same way. So we have the first day, the second day, yada yada, and then the chapters in Fontenelle's work are the first evening, the second evening, third evening, so on and so forth. So even though nobody really knows who Fontenelle is today, and Galileo is very famous, Fontenelle was really well known in his time. The only thing that I've read about Fontenelle that's really not great is that he doesn't actually go into English very well. So he's kind of like Pushkin or Shakespeare where he's very, 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 very French. Having said that, you don't have to speak French to appreciate Fontenelle, because I certainly do not. It is an awesome book in almost every way. Here's why. Number one, it is the first of its kind. Conversations on the Plurality of Worlds was written for a lay audience, kind of like sciencey books are today, but most scientists at the time didn't do that. They wrote their books in Latin, and they wrote them with lots of technical jargon, a lot of math, a lot of diagrams. They weren't written for normal people. Fontenelle sort of pioneered this, I'm going to write science for normal people. So he wrote it in French, he wrote it for the French people, he doesn't use technical jargon, something that Copernicus, Bra, Kepler, Galileo, they all use some pretty heavy words sometimes. Number two, it's the first of its kind. So Fontenelle actually makes the other main character, so he's speaking from himself, but it's a fictional Fontenelle. It's very unlikely this conversation actually happened the way that he says it happened. But his main character, the Marquis, is actually a woman. The Marquis is probably based off of a historical person that Fontenelle knew, or several women that Fontenelle knew. He was very popular in salons, he enjoyed high society, he enjoyed just going places and mingling and talking to people and philosophizing, basically. And salons were, back in those days, that's where people went to go and discuss philosophical ideas. And actually it was one of the few philosophical places that women didn't just you know, they weren't just, women weren't just allowed in salons, generally women ran salons, and so, you know, when we say salon today, we think of hair, and our nails, and getting stuff done, but actually, during the French Enlightenment, salons were where you went to basically have a club of smart people talk about something philosophical, and that was really common. So Fontenelle takes this woman, the Marquis, and he makes her the Inquisitor. So basically he's saying, I think this, and she's saying, yeah, I don't buy it. And here's why. So he makes her skeptical, and he makes her smart, and he does go out of his way to compliment her womanly virtues, her charm, her beauty, blah blah blah, but he does make her skeptical, and he makes her intelligent. Furthermore, in the preface, he actually says that he wrote a woman into the story to entice women to read the book and to not accept inferiority. In the dedication he writes about the Marquis, For my part I hold her a scholar because of the extreme ease which she could become one. What is she lacking? To have poured over books? That's nothing. Many people have done that all their lives, to whom I would refuse, if I dared, the name of scholar. Number the third. Conversations is readable. Going back to Galileo, Galileo was a scientist, and he discovered lots of things, and he was really, really cool, and I nothing against Galileo, but he probably could have weaponized boredom had he lived just a little bit longer. My point is, while the dialogues concerning the two chief world systems was more theoretically groundbreaking, Conversations on the Plurality of Worlds is still a better read. Number four. It's succinct. Don't you feel like you've been watching this video forever? Yeah, you wouldn't feel that way if you just go read Fontenelle's book. The man is amazingly succinct, especially for the subject material, which covers the known universe at the time. Number six, it's beautiful and it's fun. In fact, at the beginning of the book, when he's writing to his patron, he says, do you realize that my account will be a book, and what's worse, a book of philosophy? And that's just kind of an example of Fontenelle's style of self-deprecating humor, which he uses throughout the book. And finally, Conversations is just really likable. Fontenelle is really likable. Honestly, if I had a time machine, I would go, he'd probably be my first stop. I would go back in time, shake his hand, be like, 
Sir, you are a great writer. You are just, you will spawn generations of science writers, people who are going to try and bring science to normal people. His desire and the Marquis's desire to see just for a glimpse those tiny little spots of light and to know more about those worlds than any speculation can possibly bring them is compelling. And when I see pictures from Voyager 2 or the Cassini Huygens mission, I can't help but feel this sense of gratitude for technology and for science and for how far we've come because this is what a person with with the best access to the best telescopes in the 1600s could ever hope to see. This is what we can all easily see today. I would go pick up a copy of this, you can get it on Amazon, you can get The Discovery of New Worlds with the Afro Ben translation, or my personal favorite is actually the H.A. Hargreaves translation, and it is a witty and poignant and fun beautiful book. It's also very easy to understand. In fact, the original publisher put in that it was even readable by women. So you know you can read it. Sometimes you know it's good to be a geek. Well, it's good to be a geek. It's good to play the freak. It's good to come my mom and watch every other week. <laughs> so in Galileo's book, the dialogues concerns dialogue concerning the two Salonier, 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 Salonier. Yeah, I can't speak French. Quite frankly, I'm surprised anyone ever read this. You know, because it's it's quite long. It's somewhat boring. So I, I'm not really sure why the Pope was even reading it, but yeah.